here we have pure painting bees and capped honey. Royal jelly. That's a sign that she just hatched. And there's the queen bee. Whole bunch of ants. That is everything for the beehive. Hi, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and in this video, I am going to show you how to read a frame of bees. So I'm going to open up a beehive, and we're going to pull out frames, and I'm going to show you what's going on. Inside the beehive, we have frames. And either this frame is going to be empty, or the bees are going to build honeycomb. You see here on this frame, the bees have built honeycomb. And that honeycomb is made of beeswax. The bees secrete beeswax out of their abdomen. They mold it into cylinders and then heat it up and connect it to the cylinders next to it, forming this hexagon shape. And this honeycomb is the foundation of the beehive. It is where they're storing their food. It's where the queen is putting her back end into and laying an egg. So that's where the bees develop before they hatch. The bees walk on honeycomb to get around the hive. It's the floor, the stairs, and where they communicate. So the honeycomb is everything for the beehive. Now, when you're opening the beehive, the first two boxes is usually primarily where the brood is, what we call the bees that are developing and haven't hatched yet. And then up above that, we call those boxes honey supers. And that is primarily honey and where the bees are storing their excess food. Because bees bring in an excess of up to seven times more honey than what they need. Uh, and preparation for times of year when there isn't any flowers blooming, which would normally be winter or maybe a really dry season or a really rainy season. So this is the third box of our beehive and it is a honey super. See on this frame, the bees have built honeycomb. Some areas of the honeycomb are open and you can see a shine inside. Other areas of this honeycomb have a capping over it. Now you can kind of see through this capping and see the honey through it, but other ways that you know there's honey under this capping is because the capping is really bumpy. You can't see the hexagon shape underneath it. And of course, if you were to go like this, honey drips out. Here we have our second frame is more honey. There is four different kinds of food that you will see if it's in the beehive. One is nectar, and that's what the bees are gathering from flowers. There's a lot of water in nectar though. So what the bees do is they bring it back to the hive and they evaporate the majority of the moisture in the nectar and turn it into honey. Once the nectar is ripe and honey, that's when they will put a capping over it. So when you're looking in the hive and you see a frame and there is a liquid in the cells, that's a sign that you're looking at nectar. The rest of the frames in this box are honey, and we don't need to look at every single honey frame in the beehive. Let's put these frames back in, and look at the next box. Now, bees are in your way when you're trying to put stuff back in the box. Best thing to do is, you can use a little bit of smoke, but you can also just wiggle things around a little bit. Now we're at the second box of the beehive, and this is the uppermost brood box. So this is where we're going to be seeing more of the brood and a little bit of food. So, first frame of the box, and again we have Honey. And actually, you'll see right here, a whole bunch of ants. Now, a lot of people seem alarmed when they see ants. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Most of the time, they're just taking advantage of a place for their babies. And they do not do any harm to the hive. You'll see that this is nectar on this side. There's a shine inside the cells. So there's definitely a liquid, it must be nectar. And on this side we have capped honey. It's got that capping over it, but it's not baby bees because it's a bumpy capping. And I'll show you in a little bit what the other capping looks like. Frame number two is also honey. And here we're getting to the brood those developing bees. This is a very 
important part of the beehive, kind of like the heart of the beehive. You do not want to bother the brood section too much. Some people don't at all. I think it's important to check on your queen, but not bother them too much. So first, when I pull out a frame with brood on it, I do a quick couple second check on each side for the queen. And here are pupating bees. And here we have pupating bees and capped honey. So you see that this is the two times that you will see cells in your honeycomb with a capping over it where you can't see what's going on inside. On the one side, you see that the capping is pretty flat and you can see, you can't see, just lightly blow on the bees. You see that there's this hexagon shape over each cap cell. Now over here, in this part, is a really bumpy capping and you can't see where one cell starts and the other cell ends. So this is honey and over here we have pupating bees, that last stage before they hatch. When you flip over the frame, you see the same exact thing on this side. Capped honey, nectar, and pupating bees. See a bee hatching right now. One bee is partially out of her cell and the other bees are going to be hatching soon. Happy birthday baby bee. There she goes. You see how she's a lot lighter in color? And her, the hair on her is kind of matted down. That's a sign that she just hatched. You see a couple of other bees on this frame that are also lighter in color like that. The brood is what we call the bees in the development stage, and they go through three stages, egg, larva, and pupa. Egg is what the queen lays. It's an egg for a few days, and then it hatches into this little white worm we call a larva. And then the worm pupates, just like a caterpillar does, and turns into a butterfly. The bees put a capping over the, the cell, and it pupates and will hatch as a fully grown bee. So, so far we've seen that last stage the pupation stage, but only for the worker bees. The drones are in cells that are a little bit larger because they're also a little bit larger. And so the drone cells, when they're capped and are pupating, have a dome capping over them. You see right here, these cells have this bulbous dome over them. And these are drones that are going to be hatching. And there's more over here on this side. This frame is more pupating bees, but see at the bottom, there is a queen cell. I call them the practice queen cells. There's not always a baby queen bee inside growing. There's also a little bit of larva on this frame. This is the second to the last frame in this box, and this has food on it. We have nectar, honey, and pollen. You might be able to spot the nectar and honey already. We have the honey here and the nectar is the shine in the cells. But what I haven't shown you yet is the pollen. The pollen is a solid substance you'll see in the cells and it's usually a shade of yellow, orange, or red, but people have seen all different shades of pollen in the cells. Now it's not just pollen, but it has a shine to it because it's mixed with nectar. So we call this bee bread and it's fed to the bees in the larva stage because it's got protein in it. And the next frame I can see from here is honey, so we're going to leave that alone. Now I've been shooting this video for a little while now, stopping to take pictures and up close videos, and this beehive has been open for probably at least over a half an hour. And that is borderline getting to be a little bit too long. So, these are starting to get a little cranky with me. I do not recommend keeping your beehive open for more than 30 minutes when inspecting them, unless you have a good reason to. Like, 
You're harvesting honey, or you are splitting the hive. Here we have one very, very, very old <laughs> dark frame of honey. Here we have large larva and pupating bees. You'll see that some bees are walking around the honeycomb and they're spinning in a figure eight pattern and shaking their body. This is a dance that they do called the waggle dance to communicate to the other bees how to find the flowers they were just at. Bees will also walk onto another bee and shake her. And a bee will do this if they were just out flying around and found a whole bunch of food. And then they come back to the hive and they see that there are bees that are walking around doing very little. And they will walk up to a bee that's not working and shake her. And this lets the other bee know like, hey, there's work to be done. Um, it usually happens when there was a low nectar season and the bees weren't so busy. And then now the nectar season has just started. And they'll shake another bee to let her know there's stuff to do now. And here we have a frame of eggs and very young larvae. So this is what you're looking for as a beekeeper so that you know that your queen is still in the hive and doing her job. And there is the queen bee. She is longer than the rest of the bees, about 50% larger. This one doesn't really have any stripes on her, just a little bit darker at the bottom. She walks a little bit slower, but you'll also see that there's often bees facing her. Alrighty, so we saw the queen. And that is the third kind of bee you will see in the hive. The worker is the majority of the bees in the hive, all female, and the smallest bee in the hive. They do the majority of the work within the hive. Then you have the drones. They are 50% larger than the worker bees and kind of shaped like a bean with large eyes. Oh, here's one walking on my hand right now. Super fuzzy, super cute can't sting you, which is why they don't have a point on their butt. Their job is to mate with a queen, so they leave the hive at some point and wait to see a queen bee flying by. And when they do, they try to catch up with her and mate with her, because the only time a queen is outside the hive flying on her own is when she is on her mating flight. Drones can go to any hive they want to. So the drones in this hive might not necessarily be the sons of the queen in this hive. They just came here for looking for something to eat. And then we have the queen bee. There's usually just one in the hive. Sometimes you'll see two, but it's usually for a short period of time while things get sorted out. And she's the one laying the eggs in the hive. And food is what is stored within our honeycomb. We have four different kinds of food in the hive. We have nectar, which then gets turned into honey, bee bread, which is fed to those baby bees, and royal jelly. But also within the cells of honeycomb, you will see baby bees. Queen will go into a cell and she will lay an egg. And that egg will then, after three days, hatch into a larva, which is a little white worm. And then once it's ready to pupate, the bees will put a capping over it and then hatch as a fully grown bee. So that is what you are going to see within a hive. And that's what you're going to see on your frames. It can be a little tricky to distinguishing the difference between the worker queen and drone bees. As you uh, start beekeeping and you get that first small beehive and there's not a lot of bees, that is the time to work on your queen spotting skills so that when it is midsummer and your hive is considerably larger, you are much better at it. One of the tricky things to find is eggs and a few tips for you when looking for eggs. One is if you're going to use foundation, get black foundation because it can be easier to spot eggs. Also, uh, having a flashlight to shine in the cells can be helpful and if you see the queen then look around on that frame for eggs because that's what she's doing, laying eggs. So most likely you're going to see them near her. Also, if you see larvae, those white worms, 
the queen lays in that spiral pattern. So what you want to do is look for those white worms, which are much easier to spot. And then look to the size of those white worms and you should see smaller and smaller white worms. And then next to those really small white worms, you should see eggs. One of the trickier things uh, that can be also confusing is how to differentiate between honey and baby bees when they both have a capping over the cell and you can't see inside. Well, the baby bees have a flat capping that allows you to see that hexagon imprint in the edge of the cells of the honeycomb and the honey does not. Usually you will see honey in the tiny little upper rainbow pattern on frames of brood or on the first and last frames in your brood boxes. Other than that, most of your honey is going to be in that third and upper boxes. The pupa are going to be in the brood boxes and usually in those center frames with all the rest of the baby bees. But if you're not sure, then take your finger or hive tool and put a small hole in that cell if you're about to take that frame of honey to harvest. So, and, and I know it might be sad to poke through a cell with a baby bee, but it'll be much better to just harm one baby bee and poke through that cell and say, oh, there's a baby bee in there, than to um, grab an entire frame thinking it's honey and then to find that you just killed thousands of baby bees on that frame. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment if you have any extra tips, or subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when I put a next video up and the times I go live. I gotta get this veil off and out of this bee suit because I am sweating like crazy. See you next time.